<laughs> Hello internet people, did you just sit on your computer just to check on your website and then you see this error establishing a database connection. In this video I'll show you five different ways you can fix this annoying error in WordPress. You lie! Tip sweat punch. So to fix this error you need to know what's causing it. WordPress is written in PHP coding language and to store any of your article text or plugin settings inside WordPress, PHP needs to store and retrieve things from a database. And that database is run on a software called MySQL. So what this error is telling you is that this PHP is not able to connect to the database. That's as simple as that. At this point, you're probably thinking for telling me that. So the first step is to check that you have the right database credentials. This is the most uh, uh, usual cause for this error and usually happens when you're installing a new WordPress instance and then something went wrong in that installation. So this is the cPanel dashboard and in here under files click on file manager. And here you need to find the root folder of your domain. In my case it's uh, add-on domain, it's storemonkeywp.com so I'm going to go inside of it. Yours might be the primary domain and usually that's in the public HTML folder. So like here, but I'm going to go in this one. This is my add on domain. And in here we need to find a file called wp-config-php. Right click on it and then click on edit. And again, click on edit. And here at the top, usually you have your database name, which is this one. Then you have the database username, which is this one. And you have your password here. And please don't show it this to anybody else. You don't want people to access your database. No shit. And then you have also local host, which is the database host name. Now, basically you need these four fields to connect to your database. So these are how the WordPress installed them. And now we need to compare it to the database so that they match. To do that, let's go back to the cPanel. I'm gonna close this. And then here you need to scroll down until databases and then you have MySQL databases. This is the place where you can create new databases, also create new users for those databases and then connect them together. So now we need to compare the two databases. So I have two database here, this and this, so 9995, and that matches the one I have here. That's great. Okay, at least those match. Cool. Now, if you have multiple databases and you're not sure which one is which, then head to your cPanel. So let's go there. Let's open up new window. And then here, under databases, click on PHP My Admin. This is actually where your database lives and there, this is where you can also modify it. If you don't know which one is which, you just start by clicking on one of them. So let's say this one. And here you need to find the WP options. In this case, it's WPPL, but that's okay. And here you see that there, this is my website connected to this database. This is the way you can find out which database is connected to which. And this is what I'm trying to fix. So now I know that this database is what I'm looking at. And then also, if I scroll down, there's an add user to database and current users. You can see I have this user and let's check. Yep, this user exists. Now, obviously the we might not have the correct password, so you can change it here. So then just type in the new password and uh, type it again and then just change the password and just update the WP config file with the new password. For now, I'm not going to do that. And if we go back, Get to the chopper! now another issue could be that the database user and the database is not connected. And that's something you can do here. So I want to take this user and this database and check if they're connected. Then just, you could click on add. And here you can see the, all the privileges. So if everything is checked, then that means they are already connected. 
And for example, if I'm trying to connect this user to this database, which is another database, you can see that nothing is checked here. This means this user doesn't have access to this database. And I could easily add it by just adding all privileges to this user. But I'm not gonna do that right now. So in your case, just check that this is correct. Now, if everything looks okay, but the website still doesn't work, then just create a new user and remember to assign it to the right database. And that's quite easily done. You can just scroll down here to add new user, test use user, and then add a password. You can just uh, use this generator, fill in the password, and then create a user. And then go back and you need to assign this user to the database so i have now selected this test use and then the database was the 995 this is where i want to connect it now if i do it i can give all the privileges and make changes then go back now what you could do is just take those new details that you've just entered so you take the new username and the password and you update it here. So you don't need to update the database name, but you would update this to the test use and whatever the password was. And then just save this file by clicking here and then check if your website works. Meanwhile, I'll do this. Let's take a look if your user has enough rights to access the MySQL database. And you can do that by going back to your file manager. So we open up here and make sure you're in the right folder. And just in this root folder, what you do here is you come on the top and there's this plus with file, click on it. And you can create any, the name doesn't matter, connection test, but what's important that it's .php at the end. And then create the file and then you see it appears here and then right click on it and click on edit and click edit again and this file is obviously completely empty we just created it and what we need to place is this code and don't worry i'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can grab this code because youtube doesn't allow me to put code directly in the description so you'll just you can grab it from my website and what's important here you need to change uh, your settings. So first one is the database host. Then you have your username and password. And again, these you can get from your WP config file. And once you're done here, don't forget to click on save changes. And then go to your website and just type in slash connection test.php. So that's the file we just created. And now you can see connected su successfully. If for some reason your user doesn't have enough credentials to, to connect to the database, it will show up like this. Ivan Drago. Oh, whoa, uh, wrong error. Here's the real one. And here you'll tell you roughly what's going on. And, and you can take that error message and for example, show it to your web host, customer care. Or... And once you're done with all of this, make sure that you go back to cPanel, right click on this file and click on delete. Step two, since we're already in WP config file, let's check that the DB host is the correct one. For most hosts, it's localhost, but this depends a little bit on your web hosting. Now, since we're here in the WP config file already, let's check also that the DB host is a correct one. So in most cases, it will be localhost. But this again depends on your web host. And the cool thing is that WordPress has a page where it lists all the web hosting companies and which and which DB host value you should have. I'll leave this link in the description so you click there and get to this page. Step three is to auto repair your database. And you can usually tell this by just going to your WordPress dashboard and your website. And if you see different kind of errors there, then usually the auto repair will help you. But there's no harm to of doing this even if this is not the case for you. If you're getting a different error on your WP admin than on your website, 
For instance, uh, the error says something like one or more database tables are unavailable, then you need to repair your database. And the cool thing is that WordPress comes with an automatic repair for this. So let's just enable it. Again, in your WP config file, which we have already open, just scroll to the bottom and add a few spaces here and then add this line of code. No sexy bill, it's not Windows code. And don't worry, I'll add it to the description of this video and then save the file. And now if you go to this page, and don't worry, again, I'll leave this in the description. Just don't forget to change this domain to your domain and you'll end up on this page. And now here you can see two options, repair database or repair and optimize database. You can run both, but basically this one is a bit more extensive. So if you're feeling like it, it's gonna take a bit longer, but you can run it. Just click on it and you'll start running the database. And you'll see things like this. Once you're done, you can go to your website and check if it helped. Now in my case, it actually came back, which is great. If it did help or even if it didn't help, just remember, go back to your WP config file and remember to remove this line because otherwise people can access freely this page and they can just mess with your database. You don't want this to be publicly available. Otherwise your site ends up like this. Since the last three steps didn't work for you, in step four, let's double check that the database server is actually working. If this still didn't fix it, then let's take a look if there's some bigger issue with your servers. Maybe the whole database is down, then it's up to your web hosting to actually solve it. But let's check if that's the case. So go back to cPanel and in the cPanel dashboard, scroll until you see databases and here you have PHP MyAdmin. Click on it. And now you can see here, I have two databases. So if I select the second one, which is the one I established that needs to be repaired, and I click on it. If you're able to see any of this, then that means you're able to connect to it. And that's good. That means at least it's not down, completely down. So let's check the server stats and that's easily achieved by going to back to cPanel. And here, if you scroll down until you see metrics, resource usage. It will load you a dashboard. And if there's any issues, it would tell you here, but you can also check it here in current usage. And you can see here, there's some stats. If none of these have anything red, then you're all good and nothing is going over the threshold. But if you see that there's a peaks that go over the threshold and there's a lot of red here, then there's some problems with your server. It's either overused or there's just something wrong on your web host side. Step five is to double check that your plugins are not causing this issue. Sometimes when you update it or install a new plugin, it just breaks the site or the connection between the database and PHP. Now, if you've installed plugins or themes lately and then you've seen this error, then it might be that some of the plugins broke your site basically. And you can easily test that by going to the root folder of your domain and then you go inside the WP content and then you have this plugins folder. folder. What you can do is just rename it to anything else. So let's say plugins test or name a file. This will disable all the plugins. You can run your website and see if it works better now. If everything works, then you'll know that one of the plugins broke it and you can uh, do the same thing with the plugins and just rename each of them and see which one actually is breaking it. And once you're done, don't forget to change the plugins folder back to its original state. This way, all the other plugins will work. No problemo. I've also read online that some people have fixed this issue by renaming their website name in the WP options table in my PHP admin. And that for some people it helped to reinstall WordPress core files. But if you want to go that way, make sure you have a backup. I'll leave links to those two solutions in the description so you can read more about those. And if your website still doesn't work, then I will contact your web hosting support team and see if they can help you. Now, if even they can't help you, then I would check if you have a backup somewhere, even if it's a bit older, 
restored to that point. At least that way, even if you lose some data, you still have your website up and running. I hope you don't even see this part of the video because then you fix your issue. I hope this video helped you and let me know if you have any questions. My name is Robert and if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about how to improve your website, get more traffic and other website related stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe Ding button dong. so you don't miss out on anything. Here are two videos that I think you should watch next. Whoosh!